Today we're going to be talking about peach leaf curl and a little review. Peach leaf curl is a fungal disease that affects two types of fruit trees, nectarine and peach trees. And we see the damage of the disease in the springtime as the new young growth, the flower buds and the leaf buds emerge and it will affect all young growing tissue on these two plants. For making applications for chemicals for peach leaf curl or any chemicals for that matter, there's certain um, PPE or personal protective equipment that we want to wear. And these are designated on the label, so I want to stress, always read the label for the directions. But for the chemicals we're going to use today, um, you'll want some type of eye protection, and that can be a face shield, which is what I prefer because the mist comes, can come down into your face, or it can use goggles. You're going to want to wear some type of chemical resistant gloves. You need to have long sleeve shirt, long pants, socks and shoes. So this isn't a job you go out to do with a tank top, shorts and flip flop. Okay, for applying the chemicals that are necessary for peach leaf curl, we've got a few options. Um, we have a pump type sprayer and that can be used if, if that's what you have or is most available. There also is a backpack sprayer where you mix the chemical, you put the chemical in, fill it up with the amount of water. This goes on your back, it has a pump, and then you spray up with the wand. Or what might be the most helpful for homeowners is a hose end sprayer like this, where you put the chemical in the, in the jar and then as the water goes through the handgun, as you release this, and I'll demonstrate this later, um, it draws the chemical by a suction action into the stream of water and dilutes it. And how these things work is there's a dial on the top of it that has a numbers on it, and you put that dial to the number of tablespoons or teaspoons that are appropriate for your spray dilution, and you get that off the spray label. So the chemical that you need for peach leaf curl is a fungicide. And typically you want to use a copper-based fungicide. The most common, commonly available fungicide for homeowners is called Liquicop. You can buy this in most anywhere. And per the label directions, it's two tablespoons per gallon for peach leaf curl. And you always want to use a calibrated measuring device, such as this, or a calibrated tablespoon so that you're getting the accurate amount into your spray tank. Now there's a second product that you can use with the fungicide. It's not required, but it enhances the fungicide and that's a dormant spray oil. Uh, this one is, is all seasons horticultural oil and it can be sprayed with a fungicide and the purpose of this is it's a sticker. It helps that fungicide to adhere to the tree bark and, and adhere tighter so that when rainstorms come through it's not so easily washed off. This particular product you put down at a 1% solution which equals three tablespoons per gallon. Now if you choose to use two chemicals, the fungicide and the spray oil together, it gets, it's pretty straightforward if you're using a, a sprayer such as this. You simply put your two tablespoons of the fungicide and three tablespoons of this of dormant oil into the spray tank per every gallon of, of liquid that you're going to spray out. If you choose to use a hose end sprayer like this, it gets a little more complicated because the way this is designed, it really is the purpose is to spray one chemical, one type of chemical out of this jar and dilute it into the spray material. With the fungicide and the spray oil, we have different dilution rates. The fungicide is two tablespoons per gallon and the spray oil is three. So if I wanted to spray one gallon of spray out of here onto my tree, this, it has to pull a total of five ounces of the mixture that I make of two tablespoons of fungicide, three tablespoons of oil into each gallon that I'm gonna want to go out of here. And that means I would have to set my dial up here to five because for each gallon of water that's going out of the sprayer I want to pull out two tablespoons of fungicide and three tablespoons of oil for a combination of five tablespoons out of this spray tank. Here we are looking at a peach tree and the, that has recently been pruned 
and we're in the middle of January here in San Luis Obispo and this would be a good opportune time now to make a application of fungicide. Per the label directions for peach leaf curl, we want to make at least two applications of fungicide a year. The first application would happen at dormancy, which is when the trees first lose their leaves. And that varies from around our county. The north county is going to be different than the coastal areas. In some areas of the county, the trees won't lose their leaves at all. And in that case, you have to go in and actually pick the leaves off. So basically force dormancy. The final application of fungicide for the season is made at what we call the pink bud stage. And that's what you're seeing on your screen right now. It's when the flower buds just start to open and you see the pink color. And the reason that that application has to be made at that time and not later is because copper will actually damage the flower buds and subsequently damage the fruit that comes out of the flowers. Today I'm going to be doing a demonstration of showing you a spray application on a tree here. And just for um, clarification, I'm just going to be using water today. That's why I'm not having any of my personal protective equipment on. And um, I want to be able to show you an application technique while I'm, you can hear me without a face shield on. And I also, I'm going to use this little hose end sprayer because I think this is probably what most commonly is going to be used by homeowners. And I like to put a little shutoff valve onto the hose end sprayer which allows me to regulate the flow of the sprayer. Okay, this sprayer has a little diffuser on it that can be turned to create a fan in different directions. So it can go straight up or it can go sideways. And I like to spray sideways because we have a vertical surface that we're gonna spray here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move all the way around this tree. And for peach leaf curl, it's important that we spray from the ground level up to the top of the tree and we get every part of the wood covered with water. So a few things I'd like to add about um, spray applications. Uh, do not spray if the wind is blowing over 10 miles an hour, because as you can see that spray mist, it can blow up into the air and get on non-target areas. You don't want it on your neighbor's yard. You don't want it on your cars. You want it on the trees. Uh, if rain is predicted within the next 24 hours, don't spray because the rain is just going to wash the fungicide off the trees and we want to get it on the trees and get it to stick and dry. And the third thing is after you're through spraying, you want to wash your spray equipment really well because the copper in the fungicide can be corrosive and it can eat up metal parts and things. So you want to wash your sprayer really well. When we're talking about disease management, we're really talking about disease control, trying to minimize the disease as opposed to trying to eradicate it or eliminate it. And this is especially important to keep in mind with peach leaf curl, because even with the best of efforts, the best techniques, it's likely you're still gonna see some peach leaf curl in your trees in the spring. But don't get discouraged. We're trying to look for control and any application you do, any measures you take at this time are gonna pay benefits even if you do see a little bit of disease in the spring. 